I love it. Yeah, it's all right. Here we it? are. Hey, team, how we going? It is Kaz from In the Trenches with Kaz, surrounded by the lids, not from my bottles of consumption. I'm here with a coffee, okay, that could keep a sailor on night watch awake. So, JJ, that one's for you. He's about to head off. He's about to have his last meal. Will he be the pun as he goes off with Mr. Ship and actually have Subway before he becomes a submariner? Where no one can hear him scream when he takes the soap from the shower floor. Do they have showers there? I don't know. Anyway, is there ladies on submarines these days? Tell us, JJ. Let us know. Guys and gals, we couldn't make last night. I was about as tired as a shamwell in flood water. But I'm here now. The show must go on. The fat lady hasn't sung. Sorry, the lady of a lot of marbling has not sung yet. Um, <laughs> talking about ladies, we've got lovely Lauren here, who is shining here on the phone, ready to say g'day, guten tag to you. Lauren, how are you, doll? I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm a little tired too. I'm actually secretly glad that you changed it from last night to tonight <laughs> because I wouldn't have been able to make last night. But I am here tonight, so a little bit selfish of me, but... It's fine. It's fine. Look, we've got some great news we need to tell everyone about. But before we do that, should we give a welcome to everyone in the chat using the lovely voice of Lauren? Okay, for so many that have been so patiently waiting for the stream to come on, despite the fact the time's been up for 24 hours. Sorry about that. And if this is your first time here globally or domestically, tick the subscribe button now to the best channel that's here for you, that brings the surprises, the back screens, and all the information without the quarantining of your language. Subscribe right now. Look forward to it. It'll pop up on the screen. Lauren. Okay. Um, first, please remember to give a thumbs up below if you can find it. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you click the bell, you should be getting notifications for all the streams and reminders and stuff, so you shouldn't miss out on anything. And the moderators, we've got Jay Hayes and Bob Kent here. I haven't seen any others. Kirsten can't stay because she's going to enjoy a date. I hope she has a lovely evening. Does she mean like a sultana or a date? Well, we don't know. We may know. Would she really leave us just for like a fruit date? I don't know, but it is very bad timing because she's about to be <laughs> gone like a fart in the wind. Hmm. Anyway, we've got a couple of new folk. Um, I, I can only remember one's name, and it's Jay Magnifico. Said he hadn't made a stream before, but he's here now. Magnifico, good to have you here. There's, there's Leo, is here. Uh, Calamari is here. Ooh. Palpy. Um, and JJ, yes. He, when is JJ going? JJ should be going on Monday. That's so exciting. Carl shouldn't be here. He's meant to be on the Jungle Juice with his buddies at the pub right now. And then I'm going to read out some information on what the PBs, etc. are for his family in a moment. So, Jay, sorry, Carl, get out there, enjoy the brew with your buddies, and can you check out someone else's wife for me? But just don't touch. Everyone thumbs up in there if we can give some thumbs up to to Carl to tell him to get on his way, get some life balance. And I see you up there too, Skippy the Bush Kangaroo. Yeah. With the train underneath, don't get hit. Yeah. Um, Connor Brown with a seasick cow. And he says, good day, team. Thank you very much, mate. Not too cow? Yep. Smokey Bee's here. Let the toilet humour begin. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the poly... Okay, that's good. Mm, he's going to end up with the, um, because of his new fitness regime, he's going to end up with a hangover tomorrow. Hey, Delasaur, hey, I used to become a member. Well done, mate. Welcome. Before you go, Carl, can you do a hand of colour? 2, 4, 27. Casey Stoner's number, but probably not 3. Yeah, you know, 2, 3. Come on, you Connor Brown, CB. Shh, big doggy. Not too cow there for Connor. Good thumbs up for our new members, which makes him part of the family, which means he's also now at the basic rank. So before, when he was in the in the um, in the comments, that meant you could get away with everything. But now he's actually in the military. 
You know, he's got his little insignia in chat, which means he has to be subordinate to Lauren and to Jay, yep. to Rob. <laughs> well done. <laughs> and the the members are always well behaved. Yeah, they are. They're great. Welcome, yeah. mate. Welcome to the family. Leo. Leo, good to have you here, mate. Hello, everybody new. Hello, all the old regulars. Mm. Hello to all the lurkers out there. Did you, before we go on, did you hear, we'll say this one for PK, put down below what Harry is now using his surname. Oh, my God. Harry and Megan. I'm talking about Harry. Now, let's see who got it right. Is that fake news? Are you tricking me? Or it, it can't be fake news. He's actually using it. I might need to chat soon. Jam man assessment session Monday. Jam man, that's awesome. Yeah, that's where it all starts. I reckon the um, that'd be the scariest part of enlisting in the army, because not only is it the the first movement, but it's also where you do the aptitude test. And the aptitude test is when you actually get told you're not as bright as you thought you were, or you may be brighter. Let's see. We've got plenty of news for you today, team. So make sure you keep uh, keep on because you're going to find it interesting, a lot of it. Uh, remember to like the video, uh, Willie B, the team's been super busy. It's like my eyes are getting better because I had a rest. And guess what? Medic! <laughs> Stoddy's below. Yeah. It's because I haven't touched myself in anger in days. Why would you touch yourself in anger? Every man understands exactly what I said then. I have no idea what you're talking about. As soon as you get to about 13 years old, you know how to drive a manual. There you go. Stop it out. Okay. Uh, John Paul's saying Mount Bat. He's guessing Mount Bat. No. Tell, um, him, tell him, Lauren. I'm, I'm not sure if it's fake news or not, but Kaz told me before that it's going to be Mr. Markle. He's taken on, it looks like, for professional reasons, he's taken on Megan's surname. Oh, my God. Even if you're not religious, that would make you say, oh, my God, I'm sure. Well, let's uh, get the, that, the, the taste of that out of our mouths and put something interesting on in the background. Okay, what do you, what do you want? Do you want battle or do you want the ocean? I, I usually want battle. Do you want battle or do you want the ocean? Let's, let's see what they say. Maybe they just want to be chilled out. PK, I wonder what he wants. No, yep. PK, I did not buy a Biden doll. <laughs> May, oh. and just wanted to say thanks for all the motivation and info, much appreciated. Mate, it's absolutely fine. You've got 10th of May, let's put you in the book. 10th of May, Shay is going in at the same time. Uh, how Please. do you, what's, what's his name, Finger? I'll just say Finger. Finger looking good. Yep. KFC. Yep. Great to have you there, mate. Yep. So it feels like it's a long time away? It's not. Okay, let's go ocean. Oh, wait, it's Michael Scott repeating it. That's fine, though. You win, Michael Scott. Okay, you get a bit of Billy Ocean. I'm going to just up the sound a little bit. There you go. So you can sort of feel it in the background. It's ocean, or it could be Turkish prison armpit sweat. Ooh. <laughs> Come on now. If that gets too loud, let us know. You know, I know how nature it can be so annoying. I'll actually turn it down just a little bit. I hope you like that. When you're ready for battle, let us know. And for our gentleman that became a member before, chip of the week, crisp, bam, that's it. It's the new Cheeto, mm. um, rock, paw, scissors. It's the cheesy pizza. Is it? You can only buy that, I believe, at service stations at the moment, BP. Absolutely moorish. It tastes like uh, the stuffing of bloody bean bags, the texture, but the flavour is sensational, like some other chip of the past, but I can't remember which one. So that one again, bam. Awesome. Cheetos, pizza, cheese. Can you play a little game yourself with them, can you? Ah, uh, yeah, there's, um, I think there's like paws. 
paper, scissors, rock sort of thing with critters. Extra fun. They should get an extra point for that. Oh, yeah, it's true. We've got Fletch here, and we're about to talk about Fletch for the next 10 minutes. Because what's occurring, guys, we're not going to go too far into Fletch, what's the name of your platoon at the moment, mate? I know you came, went from long tanded Gallipoli then. Fletch has just successfully completed his infantry training and now has his Skippy badge for 343. He has successfully conducted Soldier of the uh, of Kapuka. He got the Cameron Baird Award at Kapuka. And now he's just completed his infantry training. Is spending his last few days with his lovely wife, Vicky, from Don't Cry For Me, Argentina. She's from Argentina. She actually is. They won the, the recipients of the Patreon prize for um, the missus that gets the, uh, looked after, but not in that kind of way, you grass-cutting freaks. And then they won the um, Xbox X, which we're waiting to come out so we can give that to him as well. But he's just uh, won the biggest prize, but there's so much story behind it. You know, Fletch got, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, with his lungs, he got um, pneumonia. pneumonia the day before he went out defensive week last year. And he was going very, very well in long tent and had to watch all of his mates march out before Christmas. And uh, he came back with a stellar attitude, went and did um, uh, the, uh, the urban week. Almost no sleep whatsoever for a week. And then after that, they do the culminating activity, 22 kilometres of the hardcore, which is the culminating activity of the School of Infantry, where if you fail, you don't pass go. And people actually failed. After six months of training, the School of Infantry either took their fitness for granted of the conditioning or were not up to the task and they fell short on the witching hour. And now they are stuck at a junction where, one, they'll either repeat it again or their career could be over or they could be recycled back into another core. I know their names. I'm not going to say them. But I had a really big conversation with uh, Felix. We compared notes to the veteran from 30 years ago when I did School of Infantry to the current day. You can't get any more current than two days ago Yesterday, sorry, when he actually completed his hardcore. It's all done and dusted. He's getting yeah. ready to march out this Friday coming up, 18th or 19th. So exciting. And Fletch, you there? Okay, it was Capion Batoon, which is funny enough because I went through in Capion Batoon. And at this stage, one of the announcements I'd like to make, because the march outs are occurring again for the School of Infantry, is I've done the numbers. I'm scratching things off my calendar. And at this stage, Fletch, I will be there at the School of Infantry to watch you march out. I'm going to come up there to watch the boys get their skippy That's badges lovely. and their lanyards in front of their families. That's so lovely. <laughs> what can I say? Don't cry. It's, it's just lovely. It's, uh, it'll be a pleasure. It's been a long yeah. journey for this gentleman. It is, and uh, it was very sad for him to say, all we'll say is he's one of his best mates, Chucky, could not have been closer to the end before his body actually said no. And it wasn't from fitness, it was because he'd actually outdone himself and put in too hard during the stretcher carries, during the stores carries, and being a teammate. He'd blown, he'd basically blown his wad, okay, is what we call it. He went too hard and... Um, had nothing left, and his body just said no. Mm. Mm. That is, no. So, That's a in there. Yeah, so if you're wondering where I am next Friday, not streaming, that's because I'm actually... Diddly -di 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 -di. I'm on the ground on Channel 7 in <laughs> Kaz's Trench at the School of Infantry where even mosquitoes swipe left. Yeah. yeah. So look forward to seeing him up there. Yaros here is the, uh, the kebab of choice. Yes, indeed. Do you want to hear what happened with Carl? Yeah, of course. Carl P is still here. Carl broke his record, and I believe it's, was it 521 today? 
I, I think it was for his five kilometre t- uh, time. Sorry, twenty minutes and um, twenty five. I think it was. He, he'll know, but either way, um, he's broke his PB again. So it's going to get harder and harder and harder for him to break his PB. But in in doing this, what he's done is brought on the warrior mindset to his two sons. Throw a pebble into a pond, creates a ripple, a movement, a reaction, and then one day he can look at his sons as unlike Lauren who is shining, it is Lincoln and Justin who are in fact shining. Why? Because when they were 10 years younger, at 9 and 10 years old, they started doing one kilometre splits after being inspired by their father. And one of the best things that could have possibly happened to the oldest son was he got beaten by the youngest for the first time in his life. So that's a shot over the bow. It shows the junior, now you're in lead, and it shows the older, you've got something to beat. Now the pride can kick in, and what we're about to see is the evolution of three young guys as they change scores, the competition between the family members to make one family better in every way, you know, it's going to be amazing. And this is the spark that creates the fuse being lit that creates success in later life and a competitive spirit and a warrior mindset. So one day when someone is going, how can you be like this? We know what these guys are special. It all started with dad deciding on a get off the couch. It's amazing to see where this is going to go. 21 28, you know, Carl P got, which is new PB. Well done. Okay. Uh, each when I go up, Fletch, I want to be just like you. <laughs> there you go. There you go. G'day, Johnny, says Lauren. Uh, yep. Grow up. Take your time growing up, too, team. Yeah, indeed. Game score. The Sworn Defender, my best five kilometres is 22.58. You'll never race someone harder than yourself. Um, we explained something today, if you don't mind me yapping a little bit more about the fitness side of things. Um, when we heard today about um, the young fella not making it um, to get his skippy badge, so to speak, the, uh, the, the prize and the glory of uh, continual and invisible training that you've done when everyone else sat down and spoke about what you can and can't do, but you did the work, the sweat, the pain... You're never alone. But basically, I explained to um, to Fletch today when we we're talking about the results that people achieve that there can be a lot of uh, reasons you can give for failure, for success, whatever. But it doesn't always equate to effort. And my explanation for that is, you know, eighty percent of people that go to the SASR to do the Carter course fail it. And these are people that are already professional mindset soldiers but they're not up to the task, which has been psychologically created to test you in every way. And the way I tried to explain this, um, and, and Carl liked the explanation, was when the Olympics has a marathon, let's just say there's 128 people there from 128 nations. Every single one of them is the fastest person in their entire country. Yet one of those people will still come 128th. And his effort is going to be no less than the guy that comes first. You can only get as good as what you can get. And someone has to come last. When a great swimmer is around amazing swimmers, you know they can feel what it feels like to be at the bottom. And that's in any activity. And that's why when people do DRS for commandos, when they suddenly are around all the guys that are all going for DRS, they don't stand out anymore. And then they know what it feels like to be the guy that they were dragging by the pack strap going, get up here. And then it's interesting to see if they'll have the same excuses that they used to not accept off others. So always remember, one day you're going to be the one that is coming at the back, tested. And that might be in a relationship. You might be the strong shoulder for 10, 15 years. You know, but one day you might need the help of the person that you helped for so many years, swap positions, swap spots. Okay, and now you're the one, okay, that is getting the help in hand and all you want is an excuse to stop. It's not easy. And it sucks when you're the one that's coming last, I tell you. 
Yeah, indeed. Um, Dave Kelly has said, hey, Kaz, thanks for all the tips uh, that you have given. My son started at Kapuka this week. Excellent. Did, did you just say that families are able to start attending in March? I believe that families are, um, are now allowed at Kapuka. But just remember that um, that's New South Wales. So you're talking about uh, Kapuka. Is that classed as ACT of Victoria? I don't know. I don't think it's New South Wales. Uh, I don't know, mate. But when I find out, I'll let you all know on the stream. You should be able to find out fairly quickly if they can or can't. Um, when in doubt, just bring uh, DFR or look it up online and you'll be able to see if you can or not. You know, if there's anyone down there at the moment that can let us know in chat whether you can or can't, that'd be very interesting for us. Yep, indeed. Fletch says that Chuck in hospital now on the drip, but recovering. That's great to hear. Yep, old Chucky um, fella went down hard. Um, yep, and I believe it was only like 50 metres from the end. And that should be a shot over the bow that all shows, shows people, also shows people that want to go to the School of Infantry. It's no joke. It is hard as hell. Yep. You know, it really, really is. And you never know when your moment of testing is. Okay, and, there, and there's nothing anyone can do to, to save you if you quit. Yep. Uh, yeah. Ah, the big news. Oh, it's funny that you ask, actually. I've forgotten all about it. Well, <laughs> basically, for four and a half years, I've been speaking about Van Halen, Van Dam, Van Diemen's Land, you know, and also the driving van, free candy, as they like to say. And basically... Wait. I'll change the background for you. Basically, what happened was, last week, enough is enough. I got off the lounge. I drove to Gosford. Skyline, Skyline Campus. Jordan was there. I went in to see Jordan. And when I'd previously been in there, I'd seen some of the vans that were there. I told you that I was stoked that I'd gone and seen the vans. But they weren't really what, the, what I'd expected. But this time they were. There was a van that was about to go to a showroom. It was amazing. And I asked, well, how much would that cost? And he told me the price. I won't tell you. And I looked at it. I said, well, that doesn't have everything on it I want. You know, so mine's going to be even better than that. So exciting. Yeah, so I sat down with him for an hour. And basically at the end of that, I shook his hand, put some money down. And somewhere between eight and nine months... I'll actually have that van. Our channel will have that van. What does it mean for our question. channel? We don't I know. Question. I have a question about it. Yeah. So did you end up picking Coke Red or Pepsi Blue? I think it's too early to tell you about the colour. <laughs> okay. You know, You're going to leave us in suspense? Who asked that question? I asked it. Oh, okay. I thought that might have been from Jay. Is Daz, okay. is Daz there? It does feel like it's dirty that I didn't pick a uh, Hyundai van. I don't know if I've seen Daz tonight. The, the make is VW. You know, I've been looking at ways for years to try and bring the price down, but I thought, you know what, whatever your dream car is, you know, it wouldn't be the same if you bought a lesser version. And this is the only time in my life I've got the chance to buy the exact van that I want with everything in it and yep. no regrets. And so that's exactly what I'm doing. Yeah, Jay said it perfectly. Van is currently in its gestation period. Well, I've actually, I was going to actually hold up, uh, and it'll come up in the next video that I do on the van, which will be episode one of the van. And that will basically be, it's a boy. I'll hold up the pregnancy test because if anything, it, like you said, it's in gestation. It is conceived yeah, so to speak exactly yeah, yeah. Well, it's, that is very very exciting it's, it's very impressive you know I, I've never seen a van like it even the ones over um, that you look, look all over YouTube you won't see a van like it yeah it's tops it is so good and we're really glad especially all the old regulars who've been here 
there for a long time will know how long this has been coming. I'm so glad you did that. I will say, but one thing, mm. it has to be a boy. You know, if it was a boat, if it was a boat, it'd be a girl. Is that how it works? I thought all vessels were female. I think it's only, I think it's only boats. We may need to look into it though. Maybe it can be a trans man, a trans boy. Hell no. Well then, you know, you better find out. (laughs) Would you like some comments? Uh, Absolutely. Okay, Mr. Big has said, hey mate, hopefully you get this comment. Well, he did. I plan on applying for the army next year, and I was wondering if the ADF will pay me, will pay for my travel if I have to go to Melbourne, for example. I live rural. No, they won't. Not not for the U session or the assessment session, the PFA or anything like that. What they will do is. Um, They'll only take care of any travels that happen for you, I believe. Tell me if I'm wrong in uh, in comments there, team. But um, only after you've actually sworn oath or affirmation will they will they pick up anything. You know, so the answer to that would be no. The, however, in saying that, what they can do is remote you sessions due to COVID nineteen allowing them to now do that. Um, yep. And from there, what that might allow you to do is one over the phone. But the assessment session, you will have to be in there. The reason being, they actually have to check out with nothing on, see if any creaks come out, put you over the skid pan, you know, see if when you stand like a duck, like your inverted atomic bomb, you know, <laughs> that nothing else sticks out of somewhere else. You know, so, yeah. You know, well, it's true. It's... Things, things going down in the background. Is that the Tin Man happening. in the background? Yeah, it's happening. It looks it's like the army of the Tin Men. Yeah, and you're just sitting there calmly. Here comes the elephant. <laughs> For those who don't know, Scipio Africanus had to actually um, create the anti-elephant drills when he was fighting Hannibal. You know, that would be less than ideal when you're a soldier who first gets told what an elephant is you know, and that you'll be fighting it, you know. Yeah. Yep, indeed. But they won. Yep, mm. for sure. Mm. So, I want to know, where is the first place you're thinking of going with the van? Well, it all comes <laughs> down to driving south or driving north the month I get it in. You know, yeah. it's um, summer is too hot to do van driving, really. Um Especially if you go away from the coast, mm, but um, yeah. <laughs> it's a, it, look. I've thought about going south and doing down around the Great Ocean Roads, down yeah. that way, potentially catching up with a few gringos, you know, yeah. and going over to Tasmania as well, yeah. um, yeah. over the Bass Strait, so I can get my vehicle written off on the ferry. <laughs> So they can really hide your body. Well, no, then, then we can go play in the snow. That'd be heaps fun. We'd go to a chalet or get a cabin and go play in the snow. That's my favourite. So you can say, do you want to build a snowman? Yeah, exactly, and we could build a snowman. If you sing that song now, would it be you misogynist pig, you know? Probably, it depends where you sing it. Do you want to build a snowwoman or a snow person? <laughs> Someone who's had 40 genders in this life. Hyperscars. Hey, guys, I've done half my application, but I've just had a serious knee injury. I'm sorry for that, mate. ACL tear. Meniscus. Can I still go for infantry as long as I get cleared? Mate, you don't know if you can do anything until this is over with, mate. You know, um, please, mate, wait, give yourself time to heal and then let's have another look at it, mate. But um, don't try to speed up any process, mate, or you might not be able to do much at all. And that uh, I learnt from Point Break, Johnny Utah, you know, quarterback punk, for those that know. <laughs> um, I spoke yeah. to Lauren before. Did you know, guys, in Japan, the one term that is never said between children and parents and parents and children is I love you. How sad is that? They don't tell their kids they love them. And the kids don't tell their parents. 
is considered as a romantic gesture, not one used between kin. Mm. Hmm. How do they show love by caring for? Perhaps that's all they need. It's just duty, probably. Yeah. Keep your room. I found one chopstick on your room. We're going to clean that entire mess up. No one, you know, <laughs> can't have them being too soft. Mm. No. You never know when the American might be back trying to take our homeland. You know, yeah. a clean room. That's how you show him. Um, so what am I doing for the next week? Tomorrow I'm getting in uh, the Hyundai, Daz's approved vehicle of choice. And I'm yeah. driving up to uh, Newcastle. And I'm going up there because my father, um, my hero, my rock, is um, got some doctor's appointments. He's 80 years old. I need to make sure that we put his mind at ease, and I'll uh, yeah. cook some spicy food for him. You know that yeah. come that comes out like some nitrous. Yeah, um, yeah cause Mum doesn't cook it for him, and uh, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do some family care. With that, I'm gonna jump in the ocean a few times because I haven't been in the ocean yet this year, and have absolutely no excuses. Yeah, same. I've got plans in, around Easter time to get in the ocean if if I can. Can, can chaos foil your plans? The cold could. The cold could. Absolutely down there. <laughs> yeah. Crinkles. Can infantry officers or combat engineers partake in SF regiments such as Commander SASR? Can infantry officers or combat engineers? Infantry officers definitely can. Combat engineers will still need to go and do their infantry training because they're not a... Um, they're not an arms corps soldier as such. Uh, so they still need to go and do that training. So if you want to go to SF, you're better off going to infantry team. You oh, are. Get, oh, sorry. I was going to interrupt you with something special. Go. B. Stubbs said, hey, Kazzy team, I have marched out of Kapuka today. Um, you can answer us there, Stubbs. Well done for stars. Can we get some um, Can we get some thumbs up and some good on yous uh, in, the, uh, in the chat here? And yep. uh, from there, mate, can you let us know? We is allowed to have a march out. Did, were families allowed to attend? You're a, you're an all core Australian soldier now, following the footsteps of the Anzacs successfully. And I, how many people from your platoon actually quit as well? I'd like to know how many people got back squirted by choice or said I can't do this and left the army. Because turn me off to go heading out for a few. You get going, Carl. Yep, indeed. Just, um, B is here. Nitro Fee is here. Fiona's here. Yep, Fiona's here. I used to have a crush on a lady named Fiona. She I don't know fun. why. She was a peculiar. She was a peculiar looking lass. I went to girl guides with a girl called Fiona. We were good mates. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I like Princess Fiona. Who doesn't like Princess Fiona? Well, it's true. Have we had anything more from um, the answer about families being allowed to go to Kapuka? Let me have a look. I can't think of anything. Fletch, you should be with lovely Vicky at the moment, taking her out for a pasta dinner while she massages the blisters on your feet. Yeah, indeed. Dave Kelly throws five thumbs up. Yeah. Oh, that's worse. I'd better take me. I'd better take me mouth guard when I go to sing O two, just in case I've stood on anyone's toes. <sighs> Judy first, Listo. I'm ready. It'll be good, good footage. It'll be like what's happening in the background. That's right. Um, Doug says, "Hey, has no march out and no one from my platoon left. Only had one due to breaking his ankle." Okay. How many back squads was there? Because I'll, I'll tell you is one thing: if there's no back squads at Kapuka, there's something wrong. I'd, I'd be looking at the instructors saying you have either let people through, or this course is not hard enough. Because I've never heard of a course where there's not at least ten percent, okay, back squatted. You know, even back in my day, that was it was the same. We had a, we had an American colonel. Um, and he actually said on one of the leadership courses, I can't trust a course that no one fails. Fletch that, is out of here. Send our love to Vicky. 
Tavuki, as I would say in New Zealand. I used to live there, so. I'm really bad at accents. <laughs> That's all right. Look at these guys knacking in the background. It's Fletch coming up the hill. There they are. You know what's funny? The um, the actual um, traverse crest across the, the, the helmet normally meant a centurion. And there was times in the Roman Empire when if you could read, that was enough to get you a centurion's position, not the private polis position. Look at these guys. If you come last, you could end up like those guys. Yeah. That's the fallen soldiers of those that have never made it through Kapuka. Uh, hmm. Okay. Um, Tears actually, for them. Uh, Stubbs has uh, clarified no families allowed to attend and two back squads. That's not enough. We need more. <laughs> we need more to trust it. You don't get to, don't try before you buy. No, we All we want is committed people. That's yeah, it. I'm in 12 and 17, so I'd like to get a perspective before I finalise what I want to do. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. It's the same as if you're going to go get a tattoo. Don't think, I'll just get a small one instead of the tattoo I really, really want. You know, you don't, don't try to buy, just throw yourself into life. There's a... Someone just went crazy. Someone with a good haircut. It is. It's a mullet man. Mullet man. Spent the armor with men going through and talking about those who've served in my family. It's been a good day. Learned a bit of family history. How's everyone doing? I'm doing great. And I'm so glad you're spending some time with your man. Do give your, you know, send our regards to your man next time. That, there is a really special message in that. I'll get to that in two seconds. It's a crackhead. Feed him a mother-in-law. That should make him happy. But not a nan. Welcome, Calamari. Mullet man, that's that one. Thank you very much, mate, for the donation. You don't, you really don't need to, but appreciate it. With that, I'll buy some zinc that I won't put on myself because I hate it. Um, but speaking with your nan, with the older people that were part of a different time to be alive, their wisdom can be so offensive to some these days. But if you have the ears that are willing to listen, they've walked on ground that you're going to walk on. And if we don't listen to them, we repeat the mistakes. Exactly, exactly. We, we really lose an awful lot when we stop spending time with the older generations. We do. And you know, as well, you, you're really missing out valuable info. And that's how we go forward as like a society. It's actually really, really important. Michael Stott has a question. Mm. Does your van have a fridge? Yes. Does it have a little kitchen area? Yes. Oh, does it really? You can, you can ask any question I'll, uh, and I may answer it or I may not. But at the moment, I'm being truthful. I even got a hot shower. Oh, that is so good. Mm. That's, it's like, that's Gucci. How many people can sleep in it? Yeah, but how many people can sleep in it? Four. It sounds like a song. <laughs> oh, yeah. the, one, the one thing it doesn't have that I'd love to, ha to have yeah. is a <laughs> like an <laughs> air horn for a truck. <laughs> that might be like overkill. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe it would be. People might think it's Simon coming through with the Cheese Express. Mullet, can you please let us know what you took away from the conversation with your nan today? And I'm going to give you as a hot tip. For anyone out here, especially when you get as old as Rob and Kaz, you know, and it's Rob's birthday, I believe, soon too, the Keeper oh, of Hounds. Hey, a whole heap of people's birthdays. And Jay, at least 365 this year of oh, these yeah, people. Amazing. It, I'll tell you something. It can be gratingly hard to go and visit old people once they get beyond a specific age where all you hear is a retread of exactly the same story. I get it. So what I did with my grandmother before she lost her life, God bless her soul, lovely, lovely lady, had a really hard life, and sometimes I didn't make her life very easy either because she lived with us for way too long, smoked, smelt like a, 
you know. Anyway, the last really great time that we had together before she had her stroke, instead of going to her house and sitting on the lounge and looking at my watch continually trying to think what is enough time where I can leave without being rude, I thought, nah, stuff it. I said, grab your purse, let's go. And I chucked her in the car. I helped her in the car. And I drove her around beaches. I just drove her around talking to her. She never got to go and do that. Just go for drives where she had no control, where there wasn't a place, a uh, a plan B. And I took her to a nice restaurant. And I just sat down with her. And she goes, oh, I really can't order much. She ate like a goddamn convict. <laughs> She was a, she had the best day, and so did I. That's so good. And then after that, we we talked, we laughed, you know, and then we got back in the car, and I took her back, and I ended up being with her for about two and a half, three hours. You know, we didn't repeat any stories. It was absolutely wonderful. And then we dropped her off. Ash Hundal has become a member. Thank you very much, mate. We love our members. Can we get some thumbs up there for Mr... Ash Hyundai. I thought it said Hyundai at first. Very reliable car. And let's throw you a not too cow there. We'll, we'll throw you some cracking. The creature from the sea that hugs you in return and tastes great with salt and pepper. It's a cracking. Feed him a mother in law. That should make him happy. Welcome, Cat Larry. Thank you very much, mate, and welcome to the crew. Guys, let's uh, welcome him to the team. Yep. You know, get out your lots of three. Yeah, that's it. Um, Smokey B has a great but calls poop related question. Yeah. Does your van have a pooper? It does. Like Japan, you need to go low. Sweet chariot. <laughs> and for those that don't know, I've got a really big Coke in my hand right now. 500 mils. So you can't slam it down fast. I'll tell you now, if you're ever an instructor, the best thing you can give to a soldier outfield or in, uh, at the end of a hard event, other than naturally a, a drink, per se, a power raid, is a coal phantom. What sort of name is that? A coal phantom? Yeah, what a, that's so great. Is that good coal? Is that clean, Cole? He's the phantom of it. It is. Let's chuck this to him. I'm going to go down. I'm going to grab you a Nutsu cow. I've got to put this up where you can see it. For a sunflower cow. Are you ready for this, mate? Nutsu cow. Nutsu cow. Ha ha ha. Are you sure? phantom. Thank you very much, mate. Can we please ask to what did we deserve this is, is it something we've done we've said have we you know it's it's um it's always an unusual experience when you receive donations it's normally because you've said something that people have atoned with and said yep i totally agree or because you have an important question that you'd like to ask so by all means you know let us know something about yourself you know and cole i'm not i don't know if you've ever asked a question before have we showed you the chip of the week bam can be found at BP service stations who are in partnership with David Jones now. Go okay. and get some. Oh, I'm going to try and find me some. Fantastic. This is for Cole Phantom. Yeah. Oh. That's a good sound. It is a good sound. Nothing brushes your teeth better than a Coca Cola when you're out bush. Come on now. I suppose. What ah. do, you, do you get time to brush your teeth? Well, a lot of people don't realise that when, you, when you're in the military, there's no time for breakfast, there's no time for lunch, there's no time for dinner. You just eat when there's time. Yep. You, you basically start going downhill as soon as you go out in the field environment because food weighs too much. It gets in the way of water, which becomes more important, which is why a lot of people, when they come back, or military people, when they do eat, it tends to be like a Labrador or a Mexican hiding contraband. You know, they just, <laughs> they just shovel it in and you go and just relax. <laughs> just take your time, you know. But you say, uh, noodles and salami, the two things that keep the soldiers on their feet. I've got a, a comment here from Ash. 
from Ozanen. Kaz, did you ever hear about RFSL? RFSL? We have them at our unit, Indigenous soldiers that don't go to basic, instead doing a 16-day course at the unit, don't have to be A-I-R-N. That's um that that'd be up way up north, yeah. The ones that do like the cultural, they'll they'll never go on operations with a regular military unit. They they have um, cooperations with law agency uh, people and federal police, I believe, and have specific roles that they um, they do. And it's about also bridging the gap that uh, that happens in those locations. Where about whereabouts are you, mate? I've been up at Nullumbai. And uh, they had the guys up there. Hmm. Sorry, I'm just trying to catch up with these questions. So. No, no, I ha but I have heard of them. I have heard of them, yeah. mate. Yeah. Okay. Um, I keep seeing Gaspo, and I keep in my mind yeah. I hear gastro. Yeah, he's just making some, asking some questions about assessment days. So okay. maybe there's some folk in the chat who can help him out with that. Okay. Uh, look at Foxtrot 80. Unlike the smaller golfers, which are Kansas Cove, etc., in RCB, 21 years, 3 area, training command, etc., completed a couple of um, courses with yourself, Kaz. There you go, Foxtrot. You, you would have beaten me in the courses then, mate, because I tell you, I'm not a course guy. I go on there, I go for the beers, I go for the cheers, I go on there for the laughs, you know, and the and the mateship and the... and. Um, Basically, from there, I put my hardest work in when I'm in uh, training command as well. And as you know, there is nothing better for an instructor than being in a position where you give a bit of yourself and you see someone turn into a, a version of themselves that they wouldn't have if they hadn't have been mentored but also had their ears open. Now, I used to, to love giving people the option when we were training officers and corporals going to sergeant where I would say, oh, I'm going to do a voluntary, a voluntary mentor session this afternoon, but you do not have to be here. But I would also take note of who didn't turn up if they were the ones that were having trouble, but then were still more mess oriented. You're going, there's a big difference between being on a course and being on your actual IT course, which is what the RBC is, Regimental Officers Basic Course. Um, yeah. yeah. But it's very nice of you to be here. It's always lovely when we're trans Oh, it is. It's amazing. And it's, um, really yeah. Good. Indeed. And, you know, feel free to share some wisdom. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> because I'm, I'm wrong 48% of the time. Well, <laughs> Yep, and Foxtrot 80, just so you know, not trying to cut you off, Lauren. I'm going to Singo at this stage, this Friday coming up, for our latest platoon from Capiong, who are doing their march out there, mate, getting their Skippy badge. You'd remember that day. Fantastic. Okay, um, here's a question. Ash has asked, Hi, Kaz, where can I learn to upright a craft and climb onto, on, onto it? A requirement for the Loadmaster swim test. That couldn't have been more confusing, Lum. Yeah. Okay. Wants to learn how to upright a some sort of water-going vessel. That that sounds to me like you're talking about Hewitt, mate. Helicopter underwater escape training. Um, that is done by military um, and air force and navy. And anyone that's going to be travelling uh, over water in an aircraft as such. And you'll do that as part of your uh, training when you get to your yeah, brigade. Just, just become as confident and strong a swimmer as you can, I guess. Once you're fully qualified, you know, you'll do that as a course. It is mandatory for soldiers, yeah. especially those in three brigade. Yeah, but you can work on your swimming. Just become a, you know, confident swimmer. Mm. And yep. you'll give yourself a better chance, I imagine. Yep, no one hears you when you scream underwater. Oh, look, oh, they're my favourite. They're my favourite videos, the phobia ones. I love them. Yeah. Underwater caving. 
near misses too uh, are, the, are the sort of ones that make you think how did it get to that stage yeah. and how did it affect this person yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Sorry. Go. I, I was just going to say we always get a lot of questions but I don't think people realise how real the training is as well uh, when you're going through military it's, it's not a joke team you know, when we tell you to be fit, it's so that you can have your smarts about you instead of being exhausted, having your head down. Those going to infantry or those going to engineers or uh, CAV, you're going to be around very dangerous equipment. You know, your fitness, you know, not talking about any score in particular. I'm talking about fit, second half footy fit. I hope Cowboys beat Penrith tonight. Um it's just it's just one of those things we can't explain to you in that position. And for Fletch to be in a position now where he has seen firsthand yesterday, okay, what I mean by this, and actually saw people that he loved within his brotherhood that are now sleeping in a different building to him because he's got a Skippy badge and they don't. And they need to go back now and do it all again or potentially give up. You know, it's uh, it can all be avoided. It can all be avoided with the hard work. Hurt now, so that you can do the work later. Yeah. Mm. Great name by Easy Street. <laughs> if you stay in Easy Street, you get in trouble, mate. Thank you very much, Easy Street. I'm gonna throw some cracking at you because it is the creature from space that loves to hug us in return, just like a demon. Did that actually? We had a weird situation before where uh, donations just started coming through, but they weren't actually from this stream. I wonder if that's if that just happened. Because it's happening there again, see? Because SOS is not here at the moment, is he? SOS is, I haven't seen SOS, but sometimes he lurks and just says, <laughs> you know, See, because these are all pop, popping up now. These are from a previous stream. I don't see that. I don't see that in the chat. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, thanks for the comments. Of course. Yep. Joshua Forbes, my brain will be just fine. Thank you. It does that sometimes. <laughs> uh, What's Fletch just, saying there? It just happens. Um, right down the bottom, he's talking to Kringles. But okay. I did see a, question, a comment from Blinky B. He said, good day, Kaz, Lauren and team. Cheers for all your help and info over the last few months. You've all been amazing. Currently appealing with DFR after being turned down. Mm. What for, mate? Can you let us know what for? We, we're getting a lot of people that are saying they've been uh, le uh, told no recently. And a lot of times it makes sense, you know. Um, but we're also getting... We've had a few people that have come on that have tried to to basically bullshit me and tell me that they didn't get in because of, for whatever reason, I won't bring them up with you. And I know straight away the person is either bullshitting me or telling me something completely incorrect because I know the difference, you know? And um, yeah. it's, it's really annoying when someone wants to take up my time when I can tell that what they're saying is a forked tongue. Um, yeah. um, sorry, I've got some comments to you. Go, maybe. go. <laughs> One of the conversations with my dad was him talking about his time in New Guinea in World War II. Mm. It was so interesting. I wish I'd recorded it, especially now my son is in the military. It's, look, mate, ditto that. Um, I, I feel exactly the same as you. When when we were going to uh, Anzac Days, etc., and my birthday's on Anzac Day. The problem was I was so interested in being around my mates, chasing the girls I had crushes on, etc., that I never took the time to speak to a lot of the old blokes that were, could barely hold their head up, that were having a shandy, that were going home early. And I wish I'd spent that time with those guys, hearing those stories, the real-life perspective of that guy not understanding that the bookend was about to get put back in the cupboard and this guy's ability to pass on his story within his soapbox in a time of choosing that made sense, was passed on. So you're exactly right, and, and, and I fully hear what you're saying. Yeah, like we were saying before about Nan, you know, it's 
those precious moments isn't you know you showing off to your parents or grandparents it's mm. what they tell you just the simple conversations they're the most treasured things you'll have and and they come from a from a an era where there was no braggadocio there was no they don't bullshit they say it was simple terms and you can tell they're telling the truth there's no um because reality is stranger you know yes it's hey we've we've got some special names here that we're going to read out that are about to go um next week and that's sorry sorry, i've got one comment that's been waiting a long time okay go kind of goes in line with that too it's from keely boyd and she said i'm truly grateful for your channel my boy has just passed all assessments at adr and leaves for Kapuka the 5th of April. Have you, you have explained so much and all my questions have been answered, big thanks. What's what's his name there, mate, Kelly? Yeah, what's your, what's, is he in the book? He well, should be in the book. I've only got to know his name and then I'll know. Yeah, exactly, or we'll just write Keely's boy. Okay, Keely's boy, okay. Well, here you go, Keely. Okay, also going in on the, was that 5th of April? 5th of April. Okay, also going in on the 5th of April is HL, Hotel Lima, is also Maddie Doug, is also Marcus uh, Rico, is also Gaspo, that I keep accidentally calling Gastro. <laughs> so that's at least five people that are going in together that are going to be able to go in the trenches with Kurs. Yep. None of us ever quit. Yep. Let's, let, let's do it for right. Keely's boy. Yeah, so fantastic. But the ones that are about to leave yep, is Skinner Mate, Jacob Craig, yep. Peter, Mayfield, Corey James, Reese, Red Ninja, <laughs> um, Satan's yes. Finest, Finest. And, Finest. Yes. and Tim Emblem. And going to the Navy again. Confusing, yep. ironic is Lucas Ship, that is ironic. and Juliet Juliet, also known as JJ. You know, so he'll be in the ship of ship. He'll be in the ship. Hmm. So exciting! Yeah, it's so close. It's it just sounds like names that we're rattling off, but yep. the reality is, this is people whose lives are about to completely change forever, and like a boil. You know, they are surrounded by an area of influence that is extracting them, okay, (laughs) and hoping for a soft landing. You know, if you get in the military, whether it be Air Force, Army or Navy, you know, you have people singing your praises because now it's all about your actions. And when you succeed and you come back, you become part of folklore, form your family. And if you're the only one that's ever served, that's amazing. And you become part of folklore here too. You know, you're our people. Um, I don't, I'm sure I'm not the only one who actually feels genuine pride for you all. I do. Especially because we know what, what they're going to be in for. You know? You now, what other job can you not put your hands in your pocket where you have to look them in the eye, but not in an insolent kind of way? where you can tell someone to stand there, look me in the eye, shut your mouth, put your hand, uh, put your feet together, put your hands by your side, and you have no right of response after I finish talking, and then tell you to turn around and fuck off out the door. Yep. The people would cringe. They'd go crazy at the inability to not be able to roll their eyes, to be able to cut you off halfway through their ass kicking. You know, it'd drive some people insane. Yeah, but that's our role. You can't fold your arms. You can't put your hands on your hips. You can't put your hands in your pockets. You can't eat while you walk. You can't smoke while you walk. You've got to wear a hat everywhere you go except inside a shop. You know? You're make, making it sound a bit like modelling, actually. Yeah, well, it's probably very similar. There, there's a code of conduct that comes with it. Exactly, and you can get yelled at and make fun of and talk to mm. Yeah. And and there's unsaid rules, and you know when you're breaking them. Oh, exactly. Uh, big fella is 
Peter and he said, hey, Constantine, won't be able to Thank stay you, for Phil. a long night. Just wanted to say that I have got my enlistment date for armoured vehicle crew on the 31st of May. Big fella. Sounds like a sausage roll, doesn't it? Yeah, it'd be yummy sausage roll. Was that the 28th of May? Uh, 31st of May. 31st of May. Who's going in with the big fella? And Cameron Smith, like him or not, congratulations for a successful career in uh, rugby league. Mm, I didn't see that coming. Hmm. Yes. What else are we going to say? We've said food of the week. We were going to go. I'll be out of town for at least five days. Yep. Keely's son has a name. Okay. We should probably just call him Darcy. Darcy. Let me see the Darcy. How dash it. Senor Darcy. Keely's boy sounds like a horse. Come on, Keely's boy. <laughs> Dave Penson from Vietnam. Congratulations to all that are embracing on their adventure. Stay fit and stay healthy. Uh, for those that don't know, Dave Penson made it to Warren Officer Class 1, the highest rank he could Okay, in the uh, non-enlisted uh, soldiers' ranks. And he currently resides in Vietnam, but like um, Science of the War, Science, not Science of the Lambs, um, dances with wolves, can't speak the language, but is inside the Indian tribe, but they're Vietnamese, so actually yeah. nothing in common. But <laughs> yeah, his culture, not his own. A culture of not his own. You know, if they knew how much he was getting paid in that street on his pension, he'd probably be kept in a back attic. You know, maybe, maybe he's like living it up like a chieftain. Mm. In foreign countries, but if they normally find out that you are worth Western dollars, you normally get taken, dispatched, and your account goes into their account, and they milk that for years to come. So make sure you keep it quiet what you're worth there, Dave. Yeah, I'm sure he's, he's pretty good. Um, Yaros would like to have a phone call with you. He's messaged the back phone. He'd like to have a phone call because he has his OSB is coming up on the horizon. Yes. Yep, let's do that. Um, we, hadn't we already organised that for tomorrow? I thought, you, you might have in your head. Okay, I'll have a look at it. I thought I'd already sorted that one out for Sunday. The bat phone's been ringing off the hook despite the fact that it's a mobile phone. You know, I think you should definitely give Kane Higgins a shout out because he came in the room saying Coca-Cola is better than Pepsi. That's how you win friends around here, Kane. It's also a true statement. Right there. <laughs> you know, the lid is normally the title you give, get given to, team, when you, you first get to the military. Um, don't see it as an insult. See that as a compulsory title that you have that gives you training wheels. You know, you can go, look, I'm just a lid. You can yeah. use it as an escape, you know. Try not to, though. <laughs> yeah, don't make uh -oh, excuses. Who is here? Uh-oh, Chongo. Chongo. Yeah, Chongo's oh, here. I always think of Donkey Kong hitting his own chest when Chongo turns up. I always think of the banana splits from when we were kids and they had that, oh, everyone will know the name of it, Adventure Island or something, those little shows on it and there was always this, uh oh, Chongo. Is that, is, is that also where banana num, dum dum, banana? No, that's the Muppets one. It is too. <laughs> that's the, you know, one banana, two banana, three banana, four. Hey, JJ's here. He's just got a couple of his mates to come uh, to the stream, get the uh, the algorithm going. Are they are they worried about you, Jaxie, mate? Are they worried there, JJ, that their best friend is about to go into a submarine where no one can hear you scream and you come out avoiding places with wind because they'll, <laughs> they'll hear your butt playing like a musical instrument? Come on now. you got to tease the Navy when you can. I still want to know, is there windows in submarines? There should be. That'd be awesome. Danger Island. Thank you, JP. <laughs> but there you go. Ah, that's it. Uh, 
the study, the banana splits. Yeah, exactly. That was great. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, shit. She's been talking some shit tonight. I know, aren't we, though? But mm. we made... That's the main thing. What do you... Hey, Sorry. JJ, let us know. What do your mates think about you joining the Navy, mate? Yeah, please. You know, it's, it's important. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Maybe you're going to be the fuse that ignites their ambition to, to go on and, and, and be something else as well. Yeah. 343 okay. Infantry, okay. the Master Chief. <laughs> Apparently you'll get a call tomorrow, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll be on the road, um, driving up to Newcastle. But uh, other than that, I'm looking forward to uh, getting up to the Nova Castrian um, suburbs, Newcastle. But unfortunately, it's going to have precipitation, rain. Uh, I hope it's got some swell. If it has, I might go and get a. Um, if it was sunny, I was going to go and get a, a GoPro and. And put it on a on a weight and lower it into the wreck at the Adolf off the Stockton breakwater, and get some ASMR underwater footage. Yeah, it'd be so good to see what comes up after an hour of being submerged, looking up from the depths of the Adolf. It's lovely. It'd be it, great. it was sunk on its maiden voyage from Germany. Yeah, indeed. Mm. Michael Stott says there is only there is one window on a sub, and it's the. Telescope? Do you mean the periscope? <laughs> there you go. Mm -hmm. This can goes forever. It's a big can. Mm. It's a big one, all right. It is. I'm, um, once I get time and I move into the other location, one of the things I'm also looking at doing is spending two hours a day either um, on, on a created gaming channel, which will also be YouTube, but not part of this channel. And the whole point will be, I'm not good at gaming, is just to get on there for two hours a day, where every time, I'm, whether I'm playing Battlefield 5 or Battlefield 6 yeah. when it comes up, or XCOM beating Lauren yeah, okay. in multiplayer, that, that I'll just let people know. If I was playing now, it'd be, Chongo, this next person is you, Will you get a kill or won't you? And I'll play until you get gunned down. And we'll see if you're a champion or a peasant. You know? <laughs> you're, you're certainly not going to win, though. But that's awesome. Yeah, I was just saying before that I need to spend some time gaming, I think. Look, I wish more old people did it. Yeah, I think so, too. I mean, older than me. Because, yeah. one, it gives them something to do. It keeps their brain... Um, what do you call it? Fired up. It's it's something that they can laugh about, you know. And I, I love it. Yeah, yeah. I well, because I've been playing Prison Architect lately. That's heaps of fun. Yeah, I've I've yeah. never heard that one. Um, I'm trying to build the perfect model prison. It's <laughs> if you your OCD would love it. It'd be Tasmania, yeah. wouldn't it? Isn't that why they chose Tasmania? Because it's a perfect yeah. location, don't need walls? It really, really is. Go down to Port Arthur, it's a beautiful place, and the history there is amazing. The, the ruins of the barracks are just, it's worth going just to see that. Is it haunted? Apparently so. Apparently so. Well, when you come down with your van, we'll go to Port Arthur, we'll go take a ghost tour. I don't believe in ghosts, but... Well, then, you, then what, what harm is a ghost tour going to do then? It doesn't mean I don't get freaked out by something I don't believe in, all right? Don't well, judge me. That'd be fun. That'd be heaps of fun. That'd make good footage. If you believe in ghosts, so I'm not insulting you, give us, give us a thumbs up now if you do believe in ghosts. Because I've been in shitloads of areas that bloody should be haunted, I tell you, and I've felt uh, real dark energy in a lot of yeah. locations I've oh. been. I'm going to put myself out there. I'm not going to be offensive. I'm going to say, yes, I do. Okay. Yes, I do. I, I will say that. Yeah. They're pretty pathetic. Okay. All I can do is, if, if they do exist, all I can do is make a curtain move or, or make a coffee cup slowly okay. turn around. Exactly. But, uh, JP's just reminded me of the dog line. That's amazing. You should certainly go to a place called Eagle Hawk Neck and check out the dog line. Is that like dead dogs or something? 
Well, no, that's where they had the line of big hungry mastiffs. For uh-huh. if the, um, it's a tiny strip of land, and they had the dogs going all the way across this tiny strip, and it was for um, prisoners escaping. They couldn't get past the dog line. Well, only one of them will ever get eaten before the rest have learnt their lesson. So yeah. those dogs would be starving. So we've got some yeah. thumbs up there. I don't mind if, if people believe in it. It's like saying, it's like you can't get cranky at people that aren't religious and are religious. No, look, either way, you know, we, we have to be different. We're not robots. Mm. Mm. Uh, we're caught up. And, and, the, and the country is beautiful there, like with the tessellated pavement. And I think, is it Devil's Kitchen or something? It's beautiful. I don't even know if that's near there, but it's really beautiful geographically down there. Is uh, okay, people. Best I go do my duties. Let's uh, see you all next stream. Okay, uh, Fiona, great to have you here, mate. Um, and and just remember, I won't be here on Monday or Friday because I'll be off at uh, the School of Infantry at this stage. And when I'm not doing that, I'll be with uh, Pop making sure that he's fed well and uh, spending some valuable time with him so that I never have regrets. Yeah, exactly. So you, you know, listening to your that's great. Uh, Aaron, I don't believe in UFO. I do believe in UFOs well, as far as unidentified flying objects, yeah. but I don't believe they're aliens, no. Yeah, I don't necessarily believe in aliens, as you might know them. I believe we are the aliens. Uh, uh, maybe, yeah. A lot of people believe in that star seeding. We spend, a, we tend to spend a lot of time looking up, you know, and we have got, in in some levels, inherited fears, with, uh, primal fears. So yeah. maybe like elephants who know exactly where to go without being given any navigation skills, where yeah. point B is, maybe that was our point A. Now, yeah. I don't believe that we've ever evolved from monkeys, otherwise there wouldn't be monkeys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, talking of blowholes, Jay Hayes, Albany is another place that everyone should visit because especially with the um, Anzac Day history that it has, the um, World War One history that Albany has is... Fantastic, and also they have an amazing blowhole. Yeah. Well, to anyone that's done the uh, Great Ocean Road too, that was built by World War One veterans when they come back from the war. Um, they they built all of that, and it's absolutely amazing. Where you will never get sick of travelling at forty kilometres an hour. It's so picturesque and so beautiful. You just know to take your time. You know, be careful taking a camera, or you can feel like your eyeballs get bogged. And you just end up staying in the same spot. The beers are overpriced at the places you stay at. There's a few midges at the caravan parks. Mm-hmm. And I don't recommend doing it in the hot months. Go in, uh, as you're going into spring and you're going to love it. The water always seems clearer when uh, in the colder months. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Crocodiles is a steel grey kind of colour down here. Mm. Lovely in its own way. Yes, I mean WA Albany. I've never, I've never been to WA and I've never been to Tassie. Two places you have to go when you have the ability to. I do. I do. Western Australia doesn't have much of a calling to me mm-hmm. for the simple fact that you can literally drive for days without seeing a thing. Um, I prefer it to be a little bit more concentrated for that. But there's also some jetties. I love jetties. Yeah, there's great jetties. Well, this this video is playing in the background now. I absolutely love that type of photography and all videography. Could you imagine? Um, and I'll be getting some of this in the next few days. The 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 turbulence of the ocean. What that can't explain. You can tell that's early in the morning. Is the the smell of the water, the the, the sound. You know, it'd be fantastic to have a coffee in your hand just capturing this and just watching it and being in the zone. Yeah, Mm. indeed. Yeah, and when you've got your band, you just be able to open the back doors and that might be your view. Well, that'd be fantastic. Wouldn't it? Mm. It's so great. You know, it's um, looking back on the 
uh, looking back on the actual lifetime, you know, as we're about to hit 50 years old, um, I know that, the, that I'm going to have some awesome experiences in the future. But I'll tell you what, team, and, and Dave would be able to tell you this as well, and Robbie Kent, you know, Jay Stoddy, you know, the most amazing stories that you have, you make when you're younger. So be careful you don't get sedentary too early and think that your life is just made to live life for the five days you get off at Christmas. Yeah. You know, if that's the case, quit your job and do something that might mean you've got to travel but gives you more time off. You know, because, so, you know, you can't go backwards. You can't. And the hourglass, the time, the metaphor for one day, you, you, you're really going to want that commodity back and you can't. Except you know, it's just like a piece of our lives, like yeah. sand. so true it is true it's deep and you never know when your bookend is gonna end you never absolutely you don't so you must um mm. actually live your life Indeed. yeah what are your legs uh okay so fletch is off well done well done fletch who hasn't it he has been given his skippy badge but i don't believe he's officially been given his skippy badge yet he actually got it off the uh, head of depot company which was a bit of an honor Personally, I would have rather of the officer not giving the Skippy badge to Fletch. He should be getting it from his section commander, the guy who actually did the training, the instructing, and hardcore with him. Yeah. I don't want someone contiquing along and coming over, you know, and then just going, oh, here you go. You go, well, that's not your honour to give. That is from those who stood there and watched me sweat and know what I put in. Now, yeah. don't invite yourself into a moment of glory if that's not your position. Yep, exactly. Informant mm. ZR6. Good yes. name. He's a rat. <laughs> he names names. He's the informant. Yeah, exactly. Snitches get snitches. Hmm. Uh, he's off to do some cardio. This time of night. Oh, I know what you mean. Oh, I, I think he actually means to train for the PFA. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't think he meant... <laughs> okay, Kringles has asked any kind of cardio regime you guys could suggest that would get me really fit for Kapuka, maybe even singleton hiking with a pack. No, I don't look. I don't recommend the hiking with a pack. Get out, um, have a, have a lot an active life, sure. But what I do believe is interval training is great for you. Plus some long, slower runs, mate. Honestly, what you need to do is sit down, look at Nick Bear. N I C K Bear B A R E or Nook Bear, as they would say in New Zealand, and then from there you will see the videos, depending on body types. Okay, what is best to suit you? But what I recommend first is you get a Foot Locker, and get them to tell you what jogger you should be wearing, not the one you want to wear. You know, to protect the feet, the body, the body armor for your feet, and then from there, like Carl P. The first thing is see what your one kilometre split is. How long does it take you to run one kilometre? The next one, 2.4. Can you run it without stopping? Then what was your time for that 2.4? Then next time you go out, beat it. You know? yeah. And the Swan Defender has a good suggestion as well. Um, skipping is really good. Skipping you know, is a, it's a great I one. Skipping. I love skipping. It's good. I, I like to skip. Skipping and swimming. I get knackered so quick doing either. Yeah, uh, boxing. You know they swear on these on their skipping. Don't ever do martial arts shit like doing push-ups on your on your knuckles. That's ridiculous. Don't do that shit. Yeah, no, that's silly, isn't it? That's silliness. I've I've never understood that one. I, you know, if you want a, if you want a lifelong wrist injury, you know, then then do that. Mm. Yeah, probably hurt your knuckles. Uh, yeah, but I, but I've seen people trying to get people to do push-ups in their knuckles, and you go yeah. if. If you've got weak wrists, you can break your wrist. You know, that's... Yeah. I wonder why. Do you need to ring your lovely girl? Uh, she's at the footy oh, at the okay. moment. She's at the footy. She She's not going to see Dad for nearly six days, so I'll make sure I go and see her in the morning. Um, I'll leave a little bit later so I can have a coffee and 
Go and give her a hug and a kiss. It'll be unappreciated until I come back with a gift. Uh, uh, well, when you get home, your package from me should be there for her. Ah, you've sent it. Yeah. For those that um, uh, haven't been on Lauren's channel yet, Lauren is shining. You know, you can see some fantastic tattooing um, uh, tutorials. Uh, there's so much more to it than what I thought. There's also a fantastic tribute to my lovely little girl where Lauren has uh, done a, a video of a mermaid for it. And again, the layering was astronomical. She absolutely loved it. She was stoked. And um, some of the, the uh, what do you call it? Some of the videos that you've done on time-lapse, I, I really appreciated those because I'm looking at a gun and you see your artistic skill coming coming alive. It's, it's just amazing. It's something I don't have a language in. Mm. Oh, thank you. That's very kind of you to say. Mm. Joy, Joy J. Maxwell has asked, Hey, Kaz, what happens if you don't pass the beep test but you pass the bookshop test? You fail it all. Like all fitness tests in the military, if you fail one thing, the whole lot is a wash. Yep. You know, if people turn up and they fail something at PFA, then it means they haven't all they haven't prepared at all. You know, because that means they've still turned up knowing they're going to fail. Gee, it sounds like the Cowboys are failing. <laughs> they tend to. Uh, apparently, their new um, their new stadium is supposed to be amazing. Yeah. But do you know the, the new Cowboy Stadium's inside, um, in the city itself? Oh, no, I didn't. Yeah. Well, if I go back to the now, it will have changed so much. Not much. Really? <laughs> no. The, uh, most of the, the, a lot of the shops are now closed up. Um, a lot of people don't realise there is um, an epidemic of Aboriginal youth crime, which yes. they're not telling Australia about that has got to the stage where people have almost had enough because yeah, they've got the, the catch and the release where they're just letting them go and they're getting worse and worse and worse. I mean, you know it's bad when you've got vigilantes on the Yeah, but people only take so much. And it doesn't matter yeah. what someone's age is. Yeah. You know, it's... Um, some people yeah. need to wrap around their head. And that's what happens when you give idle hands, you know. Soldiers are the same. If you don't give jobs to soldiers, sometimes it feels like we're giving them a shit job for no reason. You go, mate, I'm just stopping you from becoming your own worst enemy. Yeah, exactly. Mm. That's true. Yeah, but, but it's sad when it's costing people their businesses, you know? Indeed, yeah. yeah. Apparently an old lady got pulled out of a car and bashed by them the other day. Oh, you know? that's in the middle of the day, people driving down the highway in the wrong lane in a stolen car and, and, the, and the chase is getting called off. Yeah, so yeah. something can be done. Where's the politicians on this? Well, that's what it's all about. Yeah, yeah. well, they need to get moving on it mm. and actually do something. Yeah. Um, I, think we're, I think we're almost out of fuel for tonight. It seems I like... Yeah. Okay, let's, uh, what time is it? Let's let's talk for another six and a half minutes, guys and gals, because it's not, you've done nothing yeah. wrong. You deserve to bring up whatever subjects you want. Yeah. Not, and let's answer your questions. Yeah, let Rev. I'm going to, after this, I'm going to go put on the VR headset and I'm going to go on maybe a shipwreck tour because yes. you got me excited about it. Yeah. What if you saw Gilligan yeah. and the skipper? <laughs> I didn't know that. No, they really do. You should try it one day. That's, that's going to play with my mind now. Yeah, you should try it one day. It works perfectly. <laughs> uh, is it Jaden? Jaden Jaden Starenberg. What a great name. It is a good name. He gets things done. It's Starenberg. I'd love to go to Starenberg Castle. Mm. I'm imagining it on a cliff in Austria. He said, hey, Kaz, it's been lurking for a while now. You've helped a lot throughout the process, passed my PFA earlier this week and got an enlistment on the 12th of April for infantry. That's awesome, mate. Let's put, let's put you in the book. Put Count Starenberg in the book. 
Okay, what was the date again? 12th of April. 12th of April. 12th of April. Yep. You're also going in there, Jaden. With Moto and Jack Ferguson at the moment. But there'll be a lot more of you. There'll be a lot more of you in the condemned cool. platoon. And it's going to go quick, too. It's going to go really quick. Good night, Chongo. Good night, Chongo. <laughs> that means you're also going to be there for Anzac Day. You know? Don't be surprised, team, when big occasions don't happen when you're at Kapuka and things don't get turned off for those special events. And I'll explain why. When you're at Kapuka and Singleton, you have a set-up uh, training program that has bookings for rangers, for vehicles, for ammunition, for all of these things. So they can't just suddenly turn things off in your three-month block you know, to be able to adhere to the importance of a customs and tradition day, you know, because that means a, a training continuum activity that is part of your qualification would be skipped. So it's not through disrespect, okay? Yeah. Yep. JJ says, mate, can alias the YouTube channel? Surely yep. Starenberg is an alias. Surely that is made up. <laughs> well, it's a fantastic, it's a strong name. Right? It's better than Mr. Markle. <laughs> for those that are just for the, have turned up, apparently Harry has taken on Megan's last name, Mr. Markle. Please yeah, tell I, me I, that is not true. I have one word to say about it, but I'm not sure it's appropriate. Cuckold? No, it'd be cuck. Yeah, exactly. That would be the word for it. Guys, I've never seen someone who has grabbed defeat from the hands of victory, you know, like Harry has. It is absolutely insane. You could almost say, you could almost say that you could say to anyone, Meghan Markle, for her or against her. And if someone says for her, you could almost cut them out of your life now and go, absolutely <laughs> no way, you know, that you, that you can't come back from that, you know. Yeah. She couldn't have gone with someone with more white privilege than what she has. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's very, very interesting. Some people I swear they are just counter whatever you say, you know? It's it's really distressing. But anyway, yeah. Harry reminds me of those horror stories of young digger marrying a stripper <laughs> when they're 10 years older it's going to work out she's different mm, yeah, yeah sure is. we've done we've done a few of those yeah exactly <laughs> what strippers or young diggers no the the, the oh, soldier wow. the soldier that meets the stripper <laughs> and then gets in a fight with one of his best friends trying to defend her virtue you're going dude she didn't have any you know you know, at least be only fans where no one gets to touch them, but you still get the big bucks. Yeah. Imagine that going, I'm totally against it. And then she comes forward and go, uh, from the other room and goes, I just made $20,000. You'd be going, in another lifetime, I'd be very angry with what you just did. <laughs> in another lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what nah. like, Well, there's enough of them out there already. Yeah. <laughs> so hey, Wizzy Wombat, how you going there, mate? It's a Dutch name. Ah, awesome. What did I just... I just read something about Denmark. There's something about Denmark. Something to do with dating in Denmark. 
forget what it is. I forget what it is. Hmm. Very interesting. Is there a sheriff in town? I'm here. What's the news? Okay, sheriff. Basically, what's happened is I've been talking propaganda about so-called van that I was going to buy for the last four and a half years, like I just stated. Well, I had enough talk about it. Because what I didn't want to be is a blowhard and keep talking about something I'm not going to do, so I did it. Last week, I went and I put some money down on an amazing van, one of the best vans I've ever seen. But it's going to take about eight months, the same time it, it takes for basically for a baby to be born because it has to get built because I've ordered it and it's going to come from VW itself and then get delivered to Jordan, who's going to turn it into... The Frankenstein van, you know, of perfection that will become my new bat cave, so to speak. Um, I can't tell you what color it is. I'll tell you it's a boy. I'm not going to tell you much about it other than the fact that it, because people have asked, it's got an oven, it's got a hot shower, it's got a kitchen, and it's got a shooter. So good. I'm so excited. Yeah. And it's got Weinstein windows. Which means a really dark tint. You know? <laughs> hey, come on now. <laughs> T Van, I love your name. G'day from Townsville, mate. G'day, T Van. How you going, mate? Yep. Um, do you have the book still? Yeah, I do. Because we have Jonah Flanagan is heading to Kapuka the 29th of March. That's I'd rather there. be Jonah Flanagan than Joan of Arc. That, that was a hot day in Haiti for that poor lass. Okay, what was the date again? 29th of March. Yeah. Oh, 29th of March. Yeah, that's close. It is close. Really close. You'd be counting sleeps by now. And what was the name again, sorry? That was Jonah Flanagan. I want to see a man called Jonah Flanagan. That's a really good name. Yeah, it was Michael Finnegan. Jonah, you're also going with the Skulls. And the Dark March. Whoa. <laughs> the Dark March in March. They're going to eat the whole goddamn bag. And no, I am very, very excited about seeing me pop in the next uh, tomorrow. You know, but I'm also pretty excited about going to the School of Infantry this week coming up and going and seeing Cappy on Batoon. As they receive their skippy badges, yes, their, lany their lanyard that is worn on the left, they're the only corps that wears it on the left. They wear it on the left. Yeah. And from there... I about it. Yeah. Pardon me. That was gastro, not gaspo. Um, did you just do a flop? I did. <laughs> it's better out than in. Good I didn't want it to be the elephant in the room which is real ivory, by the way, for those that are <laughs> going to go crazy. That's how, that's how different our world is. That was normal when we were growing up, getting ivory as presents from your uncles that had been to the Ivory Coast and back. Now you do that and people want you to hang. No, that would trigger people too. Um, yeah, so basically we're going to go to the School of Infantry. We're going to see these guys. And this will be the last time a lot of these soldiers ever see each other again. They think they're going to be mates to the end, but they're not. <laughs> okay, that's when some are going to go to 1R. Some are going to go to the 2nd Battalion, Royal Australian Regiment, 2nd to none, amphibious. And then some are going to go to 3, some are going to go to 5, some are going to go to 7, some are going to go to 8, 9, some are going to go to 6, some are going to go to 2 Commando. Now, these guys are all going to... Go their separate ways. Okay? They may not see each other again. Yeah, they might cross those. Sometimes it, it, you do, right? Sometimes you run into people you'd almost forgotten existed. But they, they will get replaced by their new ne yeah, necessary true. friends and comrades no like that. Don't try and stay best friends with the people you went through the school of imagery with. You know, you will turn your back on those that you're Rikapuka with the day you leave, and then you'll be well, buddies with those that 
You're at Singleton with. Once you leave Singleton, you get to the battalion. You need to hang out and show your allegiance to your section and your platoon and your company and your battalion that you go to. You yeah. know, that's Indeed. what, yeah. Indeed. Um, before, um, when are you putting up the video where people can recommend their videos? That's not garlic. This is about to come up. That That's, that's a kangaroo scrotum. That's going out to Jody Stevens oh. in the USA. <laughs> um, yep. Yeah, I still keep meaning to put that video up. I, I'm actually really happy that people actually love the idea of like a TV week. This is the channels to watch. You know, I think it's a, I think it's a great thing. Okay. Hello, those in Gallipoli Platoon and Holding Platoon. Yeah. Remember, it's the push-ups you do and the speed that you treat your run with, the respect that you give it, okay, that will determine whether you go into the next session or whether you are held over for a subsequent session where you will do continuous hard PT until you earn your position to go into the next mustard platoon, which can be considerably long time. So make sure that less ice cream more push-ups, no excuses. And then you can be wearing the Skippy badge and saying duty first, just like Fletch is, right now. Yep. Indeed. Yeah. Um, Jack Findlay has said training three times a day for the last six weeks and every day since early last year. Trying my hardest trying to get into two RAL. Hopefully it all pays off. Just, just one word of warning, mate. It doesn't matter how fit you are. And because two hour might not be taking anyone. You know, each platoon will get a certain allocation, you know, what, what their wish list is. We need two people or no one or or twenty people that are going to two area. You know, one area will have their list, three area will have their list, so will five, so will seven, so will eight, nine, so will six. They'll all have their list. And there may be no positions uh, ready, okay, for the battalion you want to go to. In so in saying that, we also had a, a lad today, for those that are thinking that the, 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 the waiting list is as long as a piece of string, so to speak, we just had a young fella who let us know that it was only five weeks ago that he applied and he's getting ready to go in now. So nearly five weeks from the start to do a new session assessment, session PFA date yeah. and getting on the bus. He's about to go this month. Everyone's got a different journey, yeah? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you can't see around corners. No, you can't. And every single person, you know, represented himself in a different way in a different part of the country, which had positions that were allocated to them. So you can't compare someone who's in Albany, okay, to someone who's in Sydney, to someone who's in Newcastle, to someone who's in um, Brisbane. You know, yeah. don't think someone's getting better treatment. It's just because they come from a different part of Australia, you know? Have a great sleep. I hope you catch up on it all. Uh, I've heard that rumour too there. I, see you later, Stubbsy. T-Van, I've heard that too. A rumour that 2 is moving from Townsville and it make me very angry because the 1st, 2nd and 3rd Battalion were the first original battalions. Okay, from the 65th, 66th and 67th Battalions. Okay, they were the first three battalions and then in the Royal Australian Regiment uh, in 1949, we got the prefix Royal. Okay, and then those guys, it took forever for three hour to leave Sydney and actually get to Townsville. It makes sense to have one, two, and three there, unless there's an amphibious reason to, I don't know, where they, where would they move them to? You know, maybe to Darwin? Maybe that would make more sense because they'd be then working with the Marines, the amphibious uh, group up there. I don't know. I can find out. Wouldn't take me long to find out. Leave it with me. But you can't also have people swimming in ocean water with crocodiles, can you? Yeah, exactly. And you should um, give everyone a reminder to go check out the um, Tuaria Museum. I don't know. It'd be on fa It's only on Facebook, I think. It's on Facebook. They should certainly go give it a like. Give it some love. 
Yeah, the, the second battalion. Um, I don't even know what it's called. I never, because I, I never go, I never go on Facebook. No, I'll get a link for the next stream. Okay. Like, keep it okay. next to the Patreon link for me to put it into the chat for folks. Yeah, it sounds good. The sworn defender, Kaz, do you worry about our country's military in the sense that our younger generation is so easily triggered by everything? Is the ADF changed to accommodate those types of people? It is. It's called Kapuka. Yeah, look, let let me say this one to you real quick, sworn defender. That doesn't happen. To people in the military you know the people that join the military are the same quite often as the people that join the police fire brigade all that they don't get triggered by shit they're the people that are getting away from that bullshit you know the people that are triggered and all that are normally the academics okay a lot of the time those that can't catch a ball if it's thrown to them you know that are angry for whatever reason you know i don't experience that in the military you know, I didn't experience that in the military. There's a chain of command, you know, where you can't be triggered about what I say. Well, you could, you can report it, but good on you, good luck. You know, I care for the soldiers that are in my command, which means there's times where I can talk to them however I goddamn want, because they know that 99% of the time I'm doing the right thing by them. If they do something wrong, I don't yell at them for no reason. You know, we're all part of a team and there's consequences for actions. And if you say something or do something that is counterproductive to the team, then you're going to get the horns. I'll give you one example. We had one fella, decent sized fella, you know, and he was a, a Lance Corporal. I remember came, uh, I came out, not of the closet, um, one day and I saw all the soldiers sitting down doing absolutely goddamn nothing and it was 9.30 in the morning and I couldn't see a section commander in sight. And the two ICs were sitting around, which means the Lance Corporals, you know, the second in charge of sections. And I said to my guys, what are you doing? They, oh, no one's here, Sarge. And I went, righto, what are you guys doing? And it was another platoon. I think it was 12 platoon in, um, in Delta Company, 2nd Battalion. I went, righto, everyone get up and go into the, uh, the lecture room and I'm going to give you a, um, a lesson, just an impromptu lesson on subject, which is fill in the blank. I can't even remember what it was. But I remember there was a test that I'd made up. But it was funny. You know, but it was also job related. And the guy said, I'm not in your platoon. I went, I don't give a fuck. I just told you, grab your guys. In the absence of doing nothing, maybe your platoon sergeant, platoon commander will thank me for including you go into the room, and he's going, oh, we've got some things to do. I'm like, you've just been told to do something. Now go into that room, and let's do it. And he went into the room, and he decided that he was going to choose this time to die on the hill. So, I'd, And I wasn't asking them to do anything that was not um, for their best interest, to keep them from having idle hands, etc. And he basically said something about, oh, I'm going to go and see my platoon sergeant. I said, no, you're not, mate. You're going to go into that room and do exactly what I told you. And he did something and he stuffed around on this uh, test where I was just testing general knowledge or something. And I remember he, um, I asked a question. I said, well, what about you? I won't say his name. And he gave me a smart-ass answer. And I said, I believe that is you thinking that is the answer because I'm not used to you getting anything right. And then there was a battle of wills and I ended up shit, uh, stripping him down and he said something. And I said, mate, I wouldn't expect anything less from a shithouse NCA like yourself. You know, and I had to say to him later on, if you want to make it a challenge in front of all of the soldiers, then don't expect me to keep the gloves on. I'll take the gloves off and, and we'll treat things like that and I'll go lower than what you can. And this, and this guy had a grudging hatred for me forever after that but then made the mistake of coming and telling me at the club, you know, what you said, you know, you're lucky, or, uh, uh, you know, and, and tried to threaten me. I went, righto, mate, put your beer down. Let's go right now. Oh, what do you mean? I go, well, you, you're talking about fighting words. Let's go. And he's, oh, Sarge, I don't want to, I didn't say I want to fight. I said, you don't need to call me Sarge. You just said it. 
I said yes. Let's do it. And he refused to do it. And after that, it was the Battle of Wills. He blinked first. Okay, I went back to being Sarge. And the guy that didn't back down, he was the guy that backed down. You know, sometimes you've got to stand your ground and teach a young fella a lesson. But don't, don't ever offer it if you're not willing to go there. Hmm. Yep. I got the um, I haven't got anything to say to scare you. Yeah, no, I thought so. He wants to get the, the real cracking on cam. That was a that was a big night. That one. It was, that was a big <laughs> night, and anyone who was there is never going to forget it. There's no escape. Hey, talking about escape, so I've got to roll. I've got to get ready to pack for tomorrow morning to hit the road. Not metaphorically. Sorry, I just went off on a on a tangent just then, but I'm sure that you've had people that have tried to challenge your authority in your realm as well in a tattoo shop where you've had to go. Okay, um, since you want to make this nice and personal and out in the open. And then tell them exactly what you think. And then they go, well, you didn't have to say it to me that way. You go, you never call out someone unless you're ready to take the horns. Yeah, exactly. The, yeah, if you're in a tattoo studio, you probably better, better policy is to be straight up with people. Mm. Yeah. If you did, you know, there's um, no point not saying There's some points. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's get out of here. Thank you very yeah. much for your time, team. Sorry to invade your Saturday. Uh, crinkles, crinkle chips. Remember these ones. The new Cheetos, BP. That's where we need to go to get them. The cheesy pizza. One of the yep. best crisps yep. I've had. Fantastic. Because okay, I was trying to figure out what you said they tasted like. You said they tasted like a, a chip of long ago. But mm. they yes, taste like They did not taste like tubes, which is not a chip. It's a delicious bite-sized saucy snack. It's a crisp, isn't it? Kyle? No. No. It was it wasn't a crisp. It was a way of life. These taste like <laughs> these taste like the inside of a bean bag, but have a certain MSG flavour to it. You know, that was fantastic. No, nothing like a Fonzie. Stop it. Almost like a almost like a not a burger man. I can't do burger rings. No, not a burger ring. Burger man, completely different chip. Yeah, right. I can't do a burger man. I've never had a burger man. Sheriff in town. Flaming hot Cheetos. I can't do those. I I love spicy food, but I don't like it when it's t the heat is all about making it, you know, sort of yeah. suck. You know, the, the kettle chili chip is fantastic. Take it. So yeah, well, the news about the van is is amazing. You know, the the fact that um, we'll have merch in the van, the fact that we can be travelling around the countryside. You guys have been able to tell me as members or Patreon members where you need me to go next. What's on the wish list? We want you to speak to a really, really bohemian-looking man who has a fiddle, okay, or a, a, an incredibly beautiful woman who's wearing scant clothing and has one dreadlock, you know, okay. or some pirate-looking buckaroo. Yeah, indeed. You know. There's also interesting characters. Have you got time for one more question? Of course I do. Okay, Jan Man said, thanks for another stream. How do I get on the bat phone? The bat phone, all you've got to go do is go to Patreon, mate. Um, Patreon, um, I haven't got the link on here. Um, for, the, for the price of a coffee a month, basically what occurs is, it's a boy, um, is you go to Patreon, okay, you become a member, we, we, we send you the number, we give you a regimental number, you become part of the 10th Legion, and then from there, your number goes into this phone when you text it to the phone, okay, and then from there, we lock in a conversation, and you can communicate with me, you know, it's the easiest and best way, that way it is a one-on-one -on -one conversation which is all about and tailored to your exact needs instead of this carpet bombing of questions that we do on the stream, so to speak. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Indeed. 
Indeed. So, where? What's the best way for that link? Um, for Patreon. Yeah. I can drop it in there right now if you like. You can if you want. Okay. I believe you can. JJ, he's about to go. Oh, I can't wait. You can't even yeah. send us photos, JJ. It's, you're the, I hate to say it, but you're the most exciting recipient. People are going to infantry, okay. People are going to transport, okay. People are going to Air Force, but not being a pilot, okay. But a submariner. JJ, I can't wait for your stories. Hmm. <laughs> Rob Kent made a very unsavory joke. <laughs> there's a link down there for those that want to come to Patreon join the 10th Legion which was Julius Caesar's favoured legion and there's documentaries exactly why and I think I've even put that documentary on the Patreon hmm. there you are. okay guys let's get out of here let's go take it easy and thank you very much for being here press like if you liked you know, I hope you've enjoyed the, the moving background and it wasn't too distracting with the sound of water you know, and it, the absolute pleasure is mine. And to be able to go and see Capiong Platoon march out this week is going to be stellar. If I can handle being away from my dog that long. So great. That is so exciting. I'm so glad you're going. Fletch must be just thinking, man, you know, how tired must a Chucky have been to have been able to see the finish line and his body just collapsed. He's in hospital now. So it tells you how hard he put in. All right, team. Take it easy. See you later. And good to have you here, Arch. Good to have you here. See you later, Cobbers.